Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to make and install faux tie-back curtains using a decorative fabric from SailRight. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. In this first chapter, we'll determine the fabric required. So here's our wrinkle band tape and I've inserted one of the hooks in it. What we need to do before we do our calculations is determine the placement of each one of these locations for the hooks. So typically, on a regular curtain, they're about four inches apart, though you can space them anything you want. So if I measure from where this one is mounted here at the end, and I measure to this one right here, you can tell that we have a placement for a hook every four inches. So our window is going to have a 12 inch um, faux uh, tie back curtain. So 12 inches here and 12 inches here. We're not going to have anything in the center since it's just a faux curtain. So uh, we want a fullness factor of around three to four. I'm going to do uh, four. So I'm going to take 12 times four and that equals 48. Now we know that our, our carriers are going to be four inches apart. So I need to take 48 and divide that by four and that results in 12, which is a whole number. Now if this weren't a whole number, that would be a problem because we need a carrier to be here on the end and here on the end. So if, if this were, let's say 50 uh, divided by four, what is that? 50 divided by four equals 12.5. I would have to uh, basically cut down the shade by a few inches or raise the shade by a few inches so I get a whole number like I did here. So if our finish size is 48 inches, I need to add uh, for my hems. So I'm going to add two inches because I'm going to create a uh, double half inch hem on each side. So I need to cut my width to 50 inches for that. Now my height, I want my finished height to be 38 and a half as we measured it. I need to add uh, three inches for a double hem at the top. And that can vary if you want your hem to be wider. And I'm gonna add two inches for a double hem at the bottom. So that makes my uh, height 43.5 inches is my height. So these are my cut fabric sizes. Marking my fabric to the correct size for the cut size and I've also struck a line here to cut off the selvage edge. There we go. I'm going to use a serrated edge hot knife to keep the fabric from unraveling and I'm going to put the uh, uh, tempered cutting glass for hot knife underneath just to make sure they don't damage the tabletop surface underneath and also it transfers all the heat to the uh, fabric when the blade uh, comes over the top of it so it makes for fast cutting. You can cut it with scissors or a rotary cutter as well but then you have a little bit of unraveling though we are going to have a double hem so it probably won't matter much. The Serrate Edge Hot Knife is phenomenal. This is the cordless version. We also have a corded version. It's a little bit less expensive, but this is by far my favorite because I'm not tethered by a cord. Next up, we're gonna sew the side and bottom hems. I've marked this with a W for width and this for an H for height. So we're gonna create a one uh, or half inch hem on the uh, edges or the height edges. So I'm gonna take my clear acrylic ruler and I'm gonna use uh, my chalk pencil and scribe a line one inch from the edge so I can fold to that line. So I'm not gonna use double-sided tape because this is a fairly light fabric and double-sided tape with when you're sewing a light threads and a small needle sometimes gums up the needle when you're sewing. So I'm just going to use an iron 
and I'm going to crease the fabric to that line. Once that hem, hem is done, we're going to take the clear acrylic ruler and strike a line another inch from the folded edge. And this way we can create a double hem, and this takes up one inch of fabric. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite uh, side. I'm going to crease it by hand first, and then I'm going to use the iron so that it folds basically where I have it creased. And then if you want to be sure that when you take it to the sewing machine and sew that nothing moves around on you, you might want to use some pins to pin it in place about every four to uh, eight inches apart. We're going to sew these uh, two edges that are vertical, obviously, and I'm going to move my needle all the way to the left and use the center of the uh, presser foot on this left side as a guide. And I do, uh, I don't really need to do any reversing, but I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning. And we'll sew down this side. You can usually sew over your pins, but do it carefully because we have a really small needle in there. I'm sewing with about a four millimeter stitch length. We're going to call this the bottom edge and I'm going to strike a line two inches from the edge because I'm going to create a one inch double hem here. So the process is exactly the same. Strike a line, crease the fabric to that line by hand, then use an iron since we're using a light fabric and I don't want to gum up the needle with a light fabric and have skip stitches. Same thing except for with one inch. So now I'll take the clear acrylic ruler and place another line two inches uh, from that edge and then we can fold up to this line. So we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew really close to this inner folded edge and I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here and we'll do the reversing at the, the other end as well. In this chapter we'll be creating the top hem and sewing on our wrinkle band tape. So this is the side with the hems facing up. I'm going to flip this so that we get the outside surface facing up. And what I want to do now is I want to measure for our finished uh, height. Our finished size is 38 and a half. So I'm going to mark it in a couple spots on this top edge and strike a line. This line is three inches from the top. We're going to take this and flip it so the hems are facing up again. This is the wrong side. And I'm going to divide three by a half. And that is one and a half inches. And I'm going to strike a line there on the back side with the hems facing up. On this side, we want to strike a line at three inches, same as the other side. then we will fold to that three inch line and before I fold anything else or iron anything I'm going to fold this again because it's going to be a double hem 
up and we're right on our chalk line so this is perfect so I'll fold crease it here and then iron it and then fold it one more time to that line on the other side so we get a double hem here same process as the other sides except for just a little bit bigger this is the top so there's no right side or wrong side to the wrinkle band tape what I'm going to do is I'm going to put seam stick, quarter inch basting tape for upholstery right down the center. Um, this just makes it a lot easier if you, if you do it this way. So this is usually where we insert the uh, hooks through there. So I want that to fall on the end, which it basically is. So it's cut perfectly the way it is. And I usually drop this down about, uh, what is that? Uh, quarter of an inch. Let's just measure it. I'm doing it by eye because I've done this before. It is, yep, a quarter of an inch. And then I'll base this on so it's nice and straight. Now I do, I'm applying a little bit of, of uh, tension on this uh, wrinkle band tape as I baste it. And the neat thing about basting it in place is that we can make sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be before we cut it and before we sew it. Before we sew this, we're going to measure and make sure that uh, it falls right. So here, a ring will be here. I'm just using this uh, marker for that. There'll be a ring here. So that's uh, one, two. One, two, ring. 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 Then at the end, one, two, ring. So that's perfect. We're very close to the two ends. So I don't have to rebase. Now, if, if it weren't perfect, what I could do is I could actually stretch the wrinkle band tape or can shrink it up a little bit. I can't do a lot, but I can do a little. But I, I like exactly where everything's falling. Okay, so I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to move my needle all the way to the right and I'm going to start sewing here, doing a little bit of reversing. And we'll sew down this side. Now make sure the hem stays in place. We didn't pin it, but it, we did iron it fairly well, so it should stay there. Uh, but you do want to keep your eye on it. Make sure that everything is uh, staying where you intend it to stay. We're going to sew this side and then we're going to sew the bottom side of the wrinkle band tape in the same manner. So now I'm going to put the foot down and move the needle all the way to the left side. And sew this side. Next up, installing the hooks and carriers onto the wrinkle band tape. So here are the hooks for the wrinkle band tape, and here's the carrier that we're using. And you'll notice the carrier does not even fit. Now that's not a big deal. In fact, I actually like it this way, because what you need to do is you need to pry it open, and then you need to crimp it shut again so that it's locked in place. And the best way to do that is to use uh, needle nose pliers, go through the loop part, and then pull this up. Don't worry about pulling it up too much, but that's sufficient. So I'm going to do that with all the, the hooks that I need first. Notice that when we cut our wrinkle band tape, we cut it away from the square where we will be installing the hook. Uh, the two lines that are underneath it are used to pull the wrinkle band tape to create wrinkles, but we're not using it for that application. You want to install your hook from the bottom side up into that square area as seen here. We've moved on to the next area where we need to install a hook and we install it from the bottom first and then we'll slide on our carrier. Now you can't put the carrier on first, you have to put this on um, after your hook is in place. Then we'll take our needle nose pliers and we basically just bend it until the hook touches the opposite side and that is installed and will not fall off. You'll notice that at the end we did not put a uh, carrier 
on. That's because we're going to use this hook and tie it into the end stop of the track. You'll see that later on. Also notice that when we cut the wrinkle band tape, since we have a carrier very close to the end, we do not want to cut into this rectangular or square, I should say. It's a square uh, shape that locks these stitches in place because if you cut into that, this will release. So be sure to cut outside of that square. These blue marks are on the inside, so it doesn't really matter. But with a wet rag, and if you get to them fast enough, they come right off. So you can remove them if you want. I'm not going to remove any more. In this chapter, we'll be creating a fabric tie back for our curtains. So I've kind of pleated the shade here at the bottom. And what I want to do is measure around for my strap. And I get around 12 to 14 inches or so. Um, I want this to be a little bit fuller. I'm going to go with about 14 inches like that. And then I'll add a couple inches to the length of my strap. So I determined that the tie back needs to be a total of 14 inches approximately. And I'm going to add two inches to that. So I'm going to make it 16 inches in my length. And I'm going to make it uh, a cut piece of six inches, which is exactly the size of the clear acrylic ruler. And then I'm going to cut that out with the serrate edge hot knife, just so I don't have any unraveling of my fabric. So I'm going to move my uh, tempered cutting glass on the bottom side. And we will cut this out with a hot knife on those lines. We're also going to cut that uh, raw side here. You can actually cut fabric like this and then just kind of touch the hot knife up against it to basically seal that edge. So we'll cut this out now. So now this is six inches wide. That's kind of this, the strip that I like to make. I'm going to strike a line in the middle here. So this is three inches in. I'm using the clear acrylic ruler to do that easily. And then I'll um, fold this to this line. And I'm not going to use double sided tape because this is a fairly light fabric and I'm using a really light thread to prevent puckering. I'm going to use an iron and crease it. So that is right on the, that folded line. that and then I'm going to turn it around here and I'm going to fold this one up to that line as well and iron it. So here we're just going to create approximately a half inch hem, a single hem and I'm going to iron that down and I'll do that same thing on this side as well or this end I should say. We've cut our hook and loop to about four inches in length. So as you can see, this is going to be folded in half to give it a finished look. But before we fold it in half, we're going to sew our hook and loop on so we don't see the stitches of the hook and loop. So I'm going to center it between that fold and the end, just to have it very close to the end there. And we will sew around this. This, this is the uh, loop side, uh, not that it matters, we have, whether it be the hook or the loop. So we'll do some reversing here at the beginning and we will sew around the perimeter of the loop. So once we have that side sewn on, we need to sew it on to not this side, but up here uh, at this location. Um, and this has not been folded in half yet. So now we're going to sew the hook. So now we take this and fold it in half 
on that crease that we made earlier and then we try to make sure that the ends are looking good like that and I'm going to start sewing uh, to close up this end move my needle to the right here and then I'm going to sew down this uh, side here Then when I get to this end, I'm going to bury my needle at the corner, lift my foot, lower my foot, and close up this side, do a little bit of reversing. So now we have our tie back complete and it uh, would secure like this. And I leave a little bit of the hook exposed so that I can use a looped with adhesive on the wall and attach it to the wall with that. We'll show you that here. In this chapter, we'll show you how to install your tie back curtains. We're gonna cut this track. Usually it's cut with a hacksaw. This will work, but I'm cutting it to 12 inches. So I have the curtain track and it's gonna be installed with the flange going in like this. And I've cut it to 12 inches for our faux shade. So on this side, I'm going to install an end stop. And this end stop has a loop so that you can uh, basically uh, hook it to the loop so the curtain won't come open. So I want to position this uh, where I'd like it hanging over the side. Um, right about here is probably where I want it. I'm going to put a screw in the center first. So I'm going to pre-drill a hole here in about the center position. There we go. And then I'm going to install a screw in the flange of the track and start to screw it into the track before I put it up into the hole I just drilled. Let's see, is that the hole? Right there it is. And I measured to make sure that I will measure when I do the second. I will measure when I do the second one to make sure that it's in the same spot on the opposite end. There we go. Now we can make sure that it's straight and just pivot on that center screw. So I'm going to look down and basically make sure that it's parallel to our wall, which it looks like we're right about there. And I will drill uh, holes on the ends at that location and insert screws there as well. So now we can run our carriers through the track, each one of them making sure that they're straight when you put it through. And then this hook at the end that we left without a carrier can actually just go right through that and that will keep the shade at the appropriate distance. And we also have a hook at this end as well that we'll do the same thing with uh, when we install an end stop there. So now we'll install an end stop here. And then we can lock it in position with this screw because that's what the screw is for. And then we'll take our last hook and we will hook it to the end stop so that the ends of the curtain are secure. Now we need to train the curtain. Okay. So now I'm training the shade so we get the pleats where we want them and, and the pleats can really go anywhere you want but uh, I think this looks good. It's kind of full. Now we have uh, it locked at the end so we'll only be able to pleat up to this point point. and what you can do if you want to train it to stay that way is use a uh, clamp system or something similar to it to kind of clamp it and then come back the next day and and uh, then you'll find that all this stuff will basically have a memory. So keep working with it until you're completely happy. So I'm going to take my strap that we made and we're going to go around 
the shade. And remember, I want to uh, allow some of the hook to be exposed so that I can attach it to the wall. And then I can just roll it around to the back side. And then I obviously have to uh, kind of work on the shade to make it look good at that location. So I have some loop uh, here and it's an adhesive back and it's a very strong adhesive. So I'm removing the uh, paper on the back side. It's not really paper, it's plastic. And I'm going to position this um, right here. And now I'm not going to put it down completely until I test to make sure that I'm happy with it. Because I've got this cord I've got to worry about. So will I be able to operate the cord for the roller shade uh, and still operate the, um, or and still get the shade to look good? That's what I have to determine. So let's see if it can go here. Yeah, and then I can still reach back here and operate the shade pretty easily. So yeah, that's going to work pretty well, I think. Now I have to make sure it's the same on the other side. Coming up next, a list of the materials and tools we use to make these faux tieback curtains. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email. We're glad to help. From all of us here at Sailrite, I'm Seth Grant. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the link in the description below or at the icon at the top right to check out other projects in the Airstream Argosy Renovation Series.